Have you ever been so inspired by a movie that when you get home you literally have to sit down and try and recreate the effects? Well that was me in 2015 after I watched The Force Awakens. I got home and just wanted to make some X-Wing shots. Unfortunately back then I was dumb. Now I am allegedly less dumb, we'll see. So I'm going to make an X-Wing shot in one day. Is it going to look as good as the movie? Probably not. But is it going to look pretty cool? No. I'm going to need an X-Wing and a TIE Fighter 3 model, and some skies. I'm using this free TIE Fighter model from Video Copilot Starpack, and for the X-Wing, I just found this one on Sketchfab. Over at ProductionCrate.com, they've got heaps of amazing aerial HDRIs. I'm going to use uh, this one. In Blender, I've got to make them fly, so I'm going to add a path, then in edit mode I'm extruding out the vertices to get the flight path that I want. And now all i got to do is add a follow path constraint to the ships to have them follow the path. Then I just go through and fix up the rotation so they align with the path. When I add in this HDRI, it clearly isn't giving off enough light, so I'm also going to add a sunlight and position it to match the sun from the HDRI. Animating the camera is a bit of trial and error. In this shot from the movie, the tie flies into frame, followed closely by the X-Wing. As the camera tilts down, it begins to track down with the ships. And that's what I'm going to try and do. To save time, I'll even pre-visit. Okay, so I'm going to explain it using some Lego and a 360 camera. Yeah. Okay, so as I said, this is a tie fighter and this is an X-Wing. What happened is, this flies in like this, followed closely like this. And the camera goes, this goes, crashes, right? And then this keeps flying out of the frame like that. Uh... Yeah. Okay, I've got it looking alright. Now I'm going to add noise modifiers to smooth it out and add extra variation to the movement. And I feel like I talk about noise modifiers in every video, but they are just so useful. Never neglect them. Add a noise modifier. A bunch of noise modifiers through noise modifiers. I use noise modifiers. Never neglect noise modifiers. Use any noise modifier. I use glorious noise modifiers. Add noise modifiers. Use noise modifiers. Basically, I'm adding a little bit of extra movement to each axis of rotation by using a high scale but a low strand. I'm going to do the same for the ships as well to give them some organic movement. And now for the best bit, the explosion. I figured I could do a 3D explosion, but nah, that, that's, that's going to take too long. I'm going to use a couple of Action VFX aerial explosions. These ones will do. Nice. Okay, let's render. Wait. <laughs> I forgot the lasers. Uh, okay, I'm going to add a cylinder, stretch it out, give it a emission material, make it red, put it here and set a keyframe. Move forward about five frames and put it here. Nice. Alright, now it's time to render. This sucks. Stop it. Okay, so one, I'm not a fan of the lighting, so I'm going to switch the HDRI and the sunlight to be behind the ships to get some nice backlight going on. And two, when the camera pans around, it doesn't look like it is moving through space. It looks as if it and the ship are just hovering. There is no speed nor intensity, which quite frankly annoys me. Hmm. I think I should add some clouds and missile streams, which will take a long time to render, so that'll definitely take me into another day. What? Which makes the title of the video a lie. LIAR! But... I've got this really cool VDB collection from the Blender Market called Cloudscapes. I'm going to use a bunch of these clouds as well as some missile smoke. I'm just going to chuck them all down here, then put them in a collection together called Clouds. Next up, I've got this big cube, scaling it over the whole scene. Adding a particle simulator, I'll make the particles emit from volume so that they spawn inside of the cube. Going to turn off their gravity and velocity so they don't move, then set them to render as the cloud collection. Nice. Now let's render. Wait, no. I want the TIE Fighter to explode into pieces. Alright, I'm going to add a particle simulator to the TIE Fighter, having the start frame be here because that's when I want it to explode. I'm then going to add an explode modifier, tick some of these boxes, then add a couple of forces, positioning them near the TIE Fighter. They will now explode the pieces into space. Now, am I finally done? No. I'm going to attach an icosphere to the TIE, then have it emit particles from when it explodes. 
I've got another icosphere calling it Ember, and I'm just going to place this out of the frame. I'm giving it an orange emission shader, and then having that particle system emit that Ember. And now we have Embers when a TIE Fighter explodes. Okay, render. Yeah, I, I got real greedy with the volumetrics here, so it's going to take a, a long time to render. Um, you know, I could go to sleep or go out and do something with my life, but I prefer just to stare blankly at the screen until it's done. Yeah. It's done. And now I just got to make it actually look good by making that explosion pop a little bit and do a bit of colour grading, add some shaken lens dirt, um, some lens flares, and yeah, a little bit over schedule here, but I'm pretty happy with the result, so here it is, and thank you for watching.